Right. Uh, the other important news to watch is happening. What's happening at Nestle? Nestle's parent had actually asked for higher royalties, and when they had taken this proposal to the shareholders, share, shareholders have rejected this. That license fee should be raised from four and a half to five twenty-five over next five years. That was a proposal in April, and now the shareholders have rejected it. What does it mean? How important is it? Abhinish Roy, uh, who's uh, executive director at Novama Institution, is joining us to explain this to us. Abhinish, uh, how do you read this development? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so clearly, a positive uh, in the short term. Uh, the investors uh, have voted very clearly. Almost seventy percent plus majority shareholders have uh, voted against this. So for now, the fifteen bips increase for the next five years uh, doesn't go through. uh of course we need to see if the nestle board uh, comes back with a revised uh, proposal uh, that is a monitorable but uh, in the near term uh, this is a clear positive and uh, this again shows uh, that shareholder activism is is extremely uh, alive in india and uh, we do see that uh, nestle now will be able to really uh, uh, protect its uh, ebitda margins and gross margins because 15 bips uh, although looks small uh, but it has to be seen in the context of uh, high inflation currently being seen in coffee and cocoa cost uh, which is a raw material for uh, nestle so uh, it was uh, that way uh, not uh, very well timed uh, given the raw material pressure which currently nestle is facing however given good monsoons uh, this time 6% plus expected uh, than the normal we do see other raw materials for nestle to cool off uh, uh, for example dairy because more fodder will be available uh, sugar and wheat also the crop seems to be better than last year so i would say post uh, the q2 the margin profile for nestle should again start uh, improving and near term uh, the pricing power is there for nestle so the coffee and cocoa cost lot of that can be passed on now one or two questions i think investors will have uh, whether uh, the nestle board comes back with a revised proposal that is something we need to see uh, second is uh, uh, given the parent did not get uh, the hike will there be any change in terms of support to the indian uh, subsidiary in terms of uh, product uh, uh, new product launches innovation r and d support etc uh, we don't see that uh, should be a concern given india is obviously one of the most important consumer market for any multinational company second uh, nestle parent anyway is getting 4.5% uh, royalty so uh, not uh, introducing product or not giving support uh, doesn't uh, look logical at all Uh, so uh, net net uh, uh, near term positive and definitely uh, we remain uh, maintained by with a target price of 3010 but uh, uh, the next uh, monitorable will be the fssai regulations on sugar content uh, in the infant food uh, we again don't see nestle uh, uh, really facing any issue because it is uh, having very high standards of quality control Uh, what we see there is the regulator changing the guidelines gradually and reducing the sugar content so that will be a gradual process and uh, all the players will get time to uh, implement that so we maintain a buy and remain positive on the on the company okay so you don't see any fssai issues as well and you have uh, maintained a buy call on nestle abnisha two part question will you be changing your estimates on account of this baking in back the loss margin of that 75 bips over the next 5 years and secondly are there any other such companies as well which have impending uh, shareholder approval the likes of hl etc where you think this shareholder activism can play a role uh, so in multinational companies uh, this is uh, this is a issue uh, it, it keeps happening over a period of say 5 year 10 year which every company uh, follows Uh, now coming to nestle if you see it's a 15 bips uh, increase every year so it's not a very strong quantum uh, in the first or second year over a five year it becomes more meaningful 75 bips uh, so as i said we need to see if there is a revised proposal from the board till then uh, uh, i think we need to wait for that but uh, first and second year 15 bips and 30 bips i think on a th- uh, 24 25% ebitda margin 15 30 bips is not a big quantum uh, so it's more of a directionally sentimentally positive i think numbers wise 15 30 bips is a small number on a 25% ebitda margin so i would say numbers slight uptick can happen 
but uh, the board approvals will be needed. Uh, and coming back to your question on other companies, I think HUL already, uh, the uh, approval has been passed. So that is done and dusted. And in their case, it is anyway lower than the current 4.5% royalty number of Nestle. So HUL is on the lower side. But yes, now other companies which want to increase whenever that uh, time period, time contract ends, I think now they will be more uh, careful given uh, this will be a precedent in their minds also. So this is a good development for the minority shareholders. Point taken. Mm. But since you are with us, Abneesh, uh, also talk to us about Z Entertainment. I understand you've upgraded that stock. What's the rationale there? What have you increased your target price to? Yes, uh, so definitely the stock has uh, corrected one way from uh, uh, the Sony deal getting called off. So almost from 240, 250 level, it had almost become half at 135. So valuations became uh, quite reasonable. Second, of course, in, in Q4, I think a lot of the uh, growth numbers, metrics were positive. So we did see that advertising saw 10% plus growth, uh, YOY, subscription revenue saw 12% growth. I think obviously for any media company, advertising and subscription are extremely important. The third revenue stream of the movies, etc., which comes in the other sales and service, uh, that can be quite uh, cyclical and quite event-based. So that was down, but that's a small revenue base. So EBITDA margins also, there was an expansion. So EBITDA growth was 38%. So my sense is uh, company is now taking the right steps in terms of cost control. A slight issue in the near term can be that whenever uh, company takes uh, any company takes cost control issue, there can be one-time severance pay, etc. Uh, for example, tech team of Z, uh, they are rationalizing that. So whenever that happens, obviously there will be one one-time cost of the severance pay. But uh, over a medium long term, it's a positive because company will become more efficient, more focused. So I would say uh, worst is behind for Z from medium long term. Uh, it will be a very volatile stock given low promoter holding. It's a it's a sector in which media disruption is high. But at this kind of evaluation, I think uh, uh, the, the stock could give near-term gains. We have a target price of 180. There is no change in our target price. It is just that uh, the stock uh, had corrected so much, so that's why the upside came. But uh, definitely uh, the valuations are reasonable. And uh, medium long term, we need to see if there can be any more uh, uh, strategic uh, partner or buyout, etc. Given the promoter stake is only 4%, but that will take time. Near term, clearly numbers are improving and valuations are reasonable. FMCG companies, clearly growth metrics are improving. Almost every company is saying that outlook for rural growth is improving. And for Z, obviously, FMCG is the biggest uh, sector of uh, advertising, almost 50-60%. So clearly outlook is improving uh, for the revenue. Okay, Abneesh. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks very much for sharing your thoughts on uh, Nestle and Z. Clearly, risk reward is favorable. Valuation is favorable. Outlook has improved. So let's see whether the street buys his argument. Otherwise, it's become a 220 to 